Mantra is one of the best tanks in the game right now, according to many players and streamers, myself included. So. Today, we're gonna have Yeetle join us, who has played Ramatra as his primary hero since he was released to suffer as we have. Hey everyone, my name is Yeetle, and I'm a top 500 tank player who spent a lot of time one-tricking Ramatra. We're gonna go through each of his abilities and give you some tips for every single one, right after a word from our sponsor, ExpressVPN. So last week, I was feeling nostalgic for some 2000s anime, but with all these different streaming services coming out and buying the rights of this show and that show in the States, I felt a little left out in Canada where I'm from, so I used ExpressVPN who are sponsoring today's video so I could change where I wanted Netflix to think I'm located. It's also nice for gaming and Overwatch when you want to queue into specific servers. I'm looking at you Aussies, I know a lot of you are looking for a reliable VPN to play West Coast NA servers for faster queue times. All you do is open the app, pick a country, tap one button, and you're connected to the best available network. And for my Overwatch players, you can pick a specific location, and I would actually recommend LA for West Coast and Washington DC if you want East Coast. That's where the Overwatch servers are actually located. You can verify this by pressing Control Shift N in game, and you can see right now I'm connected to LAX1, and I'm actually from Toronto, Canada, so it's working. Get the benefits of a VPN by going to expressvpn.com slash and get three extra months of ExpressVPN for free. Let's begin with the Void Accelerator, his primary weapon in Omnic form. Tip number one is to always keep your crosshair at head level, since there's no recoil whatsoever. I don't want to see you guys aiming for the center of an enemy's hitbox unless you're actually unable to headshot them. Tip number two is to lead your shots, especially at medium to long range because there's no way they stand still by the time the projectiles make it to them. This requires a bit of skill in terms of reading their movement and body language. However, if they really love AD-80 or left-right, left-right strafing, sometimes you can just aim right around the middle with just a little bit of variance and they might walk into it. Tip number three is target priority. Shoot the tank if there's absolutely no one else in your immediate line of sight, but immediately switch to squishy targets whenever possible. Poking them slightly forces them away from that position and can create a lot of space for your team. A small bonus tip is that instead of reloading, you can maximize your damage output by going into Nemesis form and pummeling instead. And when you exit Nemesis form, you won't have to reload because you should be back at full ammo. This is useful for finishing off targets out of pummel range. Oh, and you know what? One more quick bonus tip that I suggest is to make sure not to AFK after you win a fight. You farm so much ult charge with this primary fire, so you should constantly be looking for long sight lines to chip at the enemy team the moment they walk out of spawn. Taking aggressive space like this is a good overall tank habit to build anyways. Moving on, the next ability we have is Pummel in his nemesis form. Tip number one is that you can pummel for 60 damage and cancel the animation with melee for 30, giving you a 90 damage burst. This is really powerful when dueling squishies because it can confirm your kills much faster. For example, against a tracer, she would normally take a pummel, pummel, pummel. Now with this tip, it's pummel, pummel, plus melee. For 200 HP heroes, it's normally pummel, 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 four times. With the tip, it's pummel, 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 plus melee. But of course, this is assuming that they're not being pocketed by another healer, so glance at their HP bar and make the quick calculation in your head. Tip number two is to learn the Pummel Melee Block Tech, which allows you to weave in extra melee damage and some blocking frames without sacrificing normal pummel speed. The only downside is your movement speed will be slightly slower when trying to chase someone down when you weave in your block. In any case, this is really effective if the target is a tank and they're not going anywhere. To do this, you need to press and hold block pummel melee. Then hold your pummel button and alternate block and melee. In slow-mo, you transform, hold block, plus pummel, plus melee. And as soon as the melee comes out, hold pummel, then block, and your held down pummel will activate, then melee. Then block, pummel will activate, then melee, and keep repeating. Tip number three is to treat Pummel like a shotgun when you're not actively chasing someone down. So when you need to transform up close, you want to go in and out of cover when shooting, so basically jiggle back and forth. That way, you're getting the same damage output while also taking less damage. The hitbox on Pummel is also very generous, so abuse this and you can pretty much shoot people around corners. Moving on to an Omnic-only ability, the Void Barrier. 
Tip number one is to mix in natural cover positioning before using the barrier. Remember that this ability has a 4 second uptime and your nemesis has an 8 second cooldown. That means you'll have 4 seconds where there's no way to mitigate damage and you want to use natural cover to minimize the time you're exposed in your omnic form. In short, think about it a bit more and evaluate how much value you're getting out of it before using it just because you can. Tip number two is just good barrier usage, and here's some examples. This would be to help your team pass a choke point. Using it to poke aggressively. Using it defensively to protect against major ultimates. Or, my favorite, using it to cut off enemy support sightlines so they can't heal. Tip number three is to put your shield up before transforming to Nemesis form. It won't be available in your transform state, so putting it up quickly is just a free shield for you and your team to get some extra protection. And you'll be close to having it again by the time you come out, so use that to your advantage when taking space. Now we're going to move on to the block ability in Nemesis form. Tip number one is that you can plant yourself in a corner and block for 8 seconds to stall as needed. Even cycle your ultimate right after as necessary, which can be incredibly useful on controller hybrid maps. Tip number two is to practice the block shoot tempo specifically against enemies with a slow rate of fire. This would be against Sigma, Roadhog, Reinhardt, Hanzo, or anyone really with a predictable attacking tempo. Pummel, then block their shots, pummel, block their shots, pummel. Tip number three is to predictively block burst damage. Some examples are Widow's Scope Shots and Soljorn's Rail. Remember that blocking also hides your head hitbox, which prevents critical damage. And a quick bonus tip is to remember to block most ultimates in the game. Like Arisa's Terror Surge stands no chance, and neither does Torb's ult. You will, however, take full damage from Sticky Explosions through the likes of Cass and Tracer. Also, in the previous seasons, you were able to block Sigma's Flux while looking up, yeah, that was a bug, and it's been patched. Next, we have the Ravenous Vortex. Tip number one is to just throw it at squishies to force them to reposition or stop peeking, which is especially good versus snipers that you can't contest. Tip number two is to throw it behind the enemy tank to make it harder for them to back up, and it has a better chance of hitting the rest of the enemy team or separating them. Tip number three is that spawn door vortexes at the beginning of the rounds is always worth it. And depending on where it is, you can farm a lot of ult charge from the bit of damage that vortex does, plus your staff damage. I got so much ult charge off that, that's such a good like poke to always do. Bonus tip, remember to use this ability as a slow rather than a gravitational pulldown. The Ramacho trailer is pretty deceiving because it makes you think that that's the ideal way to use it, but it's not. The slow is more valuable and allows you to engage with Nemesis form a lot easier right after, or as a way to continue chasing while you're already in Nemesis form, especially if they have speed. And onto the final ability, Annihilation, his ultimate. The most important number one tip for Annihilation is to make sure you cancel your initial Nemesis form first before using your ultimate in order to refresh the bonus armor you would gain in this form. If you activate your ult without going back into Omnic first, you will lose out on so much extra HP. But on that note, tip number two is that before using your ultimate, you'll want to go aggressive with Nemesis form. That way you make use out of the free armor gain, but you also force out enemy cooldowns. Once the sleep is out and your armor is gone, pop that ultimate for a fresh set and just run them down. Tip number three is to have a target in mind before going in with the ultimate. For example, you want to run at Kiriko with Nemesis first, that way she has to use cleanse and TP, then ult to chase her down. And as a bonus tip, it's important to identify what denies your ultimate. To name some examples, Orisa's Javelin Spin and Toss will wall you out. Roadhog's Whole Hog will also send you to the moon. Reinhardt's Shatter will flat out just shut you down. I think you get the point. Force those counters out or play patiently for an opening. And that's it for the Ramatra tips for every ability. Thank you so much, Yidl, for joining us on the channel. Find us socials down below. Take care.